Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It is Wednesday, June 10th, 2020, and luckily the tropics are calming down for the time being. So this will be fairly brief in terms of the look at the tropics, and I will spend the remainder of the video today talking about a road map to what we're going to be doing in the future, how you can become involved, what happened to our app, things like that. All right, so let's get on with it. Let's take a look at first what's happening out there in the Atlantic now that Cristobal has dissipated and been absorbed into mid-latitude energy uh, way up here in parts of Canada after passing through the Gulf Coast states and then up into the upper Midwest with a lot of uh, uh, impacts. It's no longer being tracked and it's, you know, it's gone. Uh, this area out here, this yellow X east-northeast of Bermuda, not to worry, it's not going to amount to anything, and we don't have anything in the five-day outlook at all either, and the same holds true uh, for the most part in the eastern Pacific, just a small area of disturbed weather well to the southwest of the Mexican coastline here, not going to worry about it, no real indications of development right now. Um, it's not like we have, even in an active hurricane season, development going on all the time. You're going to have ebbs and flows, right? So we're going to be down in this ebb, ebb tide, if you will, where we're not going to have much development. Plus, it's June. We're not supposed to have a lot of development. That would be very bad. So uh, good news to see here. Things are going to calm down for a bit. And if we look at it from the satellite perspective, Here's the uh, energy coming across the nation's midsection that helped to scoop up the remnants of Cristobal. Strong upper-level winds cutting across the Caribbean. We do have tropical waves scattered throughout the Atlantic Basin, main development region and vicinity. And some of these pieces of energy here will bring some showers and squally weather to portions of <coughs> excuse me, the Windward Islands. And... Uh, you'll get some rain showers, and in some cases that's needed. You need that. You need the tank water, as they call it. Uh, and that's a pretty vigorous tropical wave out here. But you can also see just from this milky color in the infrared imagery here, the Saharan air layer, that dry, warm, dusty layer of air that pushes off the African continent, that helps to keep things very stable. And that is a typical component of June and July and even into about mid-August activity and what we will look for in the long run is to see if these tropical waves that come off if they make it over to the Caribbean or into the Gulf of Mexico and try to develop sometimes the northern extent of, extent of them can come up into the Bahamas and try to develop or they push on through and eventually develop here in the southeast Pacific somewhere but as I mentioned, really no signs of any of that stuff happening anytime soon. If we scroll through the GFS here, the 850 millibar level over the next five days, and we're really looking all down through here. This is the area to watch. You don't see any areas that come together. I mean, let's back it up a little bit. You see this? This is way back uh, in time. All right, so this is initialized on the 8th. Uh, 18z on the 8th of June, that's what we're looking for right there. That's what Cristobal's signature looked like uh, after it had made landfall. We go back even further. You know, there it is. It came inland and whatever. So that goes by. Do we see anything like that down here uh, in the tropics, you know, through this area? That's what we look for. And the answer is over the next five days, no, we do not. We see tiny more uh, insignificant pieces of energy that kind of bleed off of Colombia here. Uh, parts of the mountains creates these uh, vorticity maximas that come off. Um, little spurts of energy that get ejected into the Caribbean. Sometimes those get over into the Pacific and develop. But this is a great tool, the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere. And even if we go on out way out in time, you know, we really don't see much now. We're out at 300 hours and the model can be subject to convective feedback and other things. But bottom line, no worries as we move ahead over the next several days. All right, so in 2012, 
I started an app because everybody said I should, and it was called, at the time, Hurricane Track, but because other apps, there's an app called Hurricane Tracker that's very, very popular, and my app got confused with that, and I changed the name of my app to Hurricane Impact. Um, it cost a lot of money to produce. I paid a company here in Wilmington. I do not know how to code apps. I can code some web pages, very basic stuff. But uh, I paid a company here in Wilmington um, and developed the app and launched it. And that was iOS by 2013, 2014. We did an Android version and tried to keep them maintained, and it became a big headache. Um, and it, it just, you know, it, it's something that I had to keep updating. More devices started coming out for iOS and Android, and then you had tablets, iPads, Android tablets. And so it just became a real money pit to keep the thing working, and it wasn't itself generating any revenue to offset those costs. It wasn't. And um, I decided I'm not going to do it anymore. And I had to update the app. I had to update the website. I had to update social media. And it just wasn't working out. It's not just a money issue trying to create a funding platform, but my time, my stress level, you know, working efficiently. You have to work smart and hard. I know there's the expression, work smart, not hard. I like to do both when it comes to my hurricane work. I don't so much like manual labor necessarily. I don't like cutting my lawn, you know, but I like what I do in this work. And I think you see that reflected in what we have done. So I decided to get rid of it, and I no longer support it. It is not in the App Store on uh, for iOS devices. And if it's still in Google Play, i got to figure out how to get it out of there. Um, I certainly don't promote it. I haven't talked about it in a long time. And I appreciate everybody that invested in it. You know, it was only four bucks or so. So it's not, and it was only a one time fee. That's the other part of this. You know, it's not like it was a recurring funding mechanism. And I think at the end of the day, as Jack Nicholson said in that movie, A Few Good Men, when he says, you know, you want me on that wall, you want me here, right? And this is what I do for a job. I don't do this as a hobby and try to make money off the side to support the hobby. This is my career. I've done this for 25 years, and I've had a lot of different ways to fund it over those years. And so the last three years especially, we have relied more and more on crowdfunding in a very concerted effort, and that has been through Patreon. And the whole YouTube um, change that went on a few years ago where a the big creators on YouTube had their ad revenue slashed because of monumental changes in the way ads were served and the monetization analog, um, uh, analytics and the algorithms. All of that changed for some of the big YouTube creators. You've heard about that. Uh, and their revenues dropped. People that aren't even doing weather, you know, some of the stuff that I'm like, why do people even follow that? But whatever. Uh, and they started going to Patreon, you know, and, and a lot of people use Patreon. You can use Kickstarter, GoFundMe, you know, you can have memberships through PayPal. We've had that since 2005. And these are all different ways to fund the work. And for me, Patreon has been the most successful. And it is continuing to grow. And I'm going to use that going forward even more. But it's a lot more than just give me money and I give you something in return. It doesn't really work that way. We're developing this cooperative, like a, a, an electric membership cooperative. You see those uh, around the country. We have that, you know, kind of like public radio has supporters and patrons that fund the arts. Public radio is a great example. That's what I'm doing with Patreon. And in return, it affects the greater good. We give back to society, to the science, to media, and it, it affects everybody. And it is supported by right now um, just under 300 people on Patreon and about 100 people or so on our Hurricane Track Insider site, which we have had uh, right here. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, Hurricane Track Insider 
It used to be called Hurricane Track Premium Services. That started in 2005 as a way to help support the live streaming video that we began. The very first ever live streaming video in Hurricanes was from us. Prove me wrong. It was. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage from the unmanned cameras to the vehicle cam. Katrina was the very first one in 2005. Dennis before that was a test run, but wall-to-wall -wall coverage Hurricane Katrina, and I was the first. My team and I, Mike Watkins, myself, we did it, and it's been growing strong and going strong ever since. So what we're going to do is continue to build on this. And so a combination of Patreon and a Hurricane Track Insider web interface, that's how we're going to do things. And, you know, what does it look like? Well, we have, uh, and let me just get rid of me for a moment. So when people log in at the, uh, if they're at the level here, at the $10 level and higher, you get access to this. And, you know, there's everything from tracking, and we're getting ready to enhance this even more. Our live video, the data, satellite radar loops, etc. Our podcast series is on there that we started. And all of our original content, every one of our Tracking the Hurricanes movies, the new series, even some short films that I've put on there. Uh, this is what the live video dashboard looks like. There's nothing going on at the moment because all of our unmanned cameras for hurricanes are offline right now, but we had six of them going during Cristobal, and we have a total of 15 that we can set up if need be. Uh, our tweets are embedded, we get the radar of the area, and then our chat. Our members are able to chat with us, and it is remarkable. This is the community that I'm talking about. Uh, and we also have our weather data, and that is available just like we used to have in the app, you know, on your mobile, we now do on the web interface. But do not despair and don't be too upset about it. We're bringing back sort of a web app. We're going to work on with Patreon as the gateway to this, the funding apparatus. I can't give it away for free or I cannot exist. I think we understand that. I wish I could. Anybody out there wants to donate about, I don't know, $200,000 a year so we can do this to its fullest, then I can give it all away for free. And I absolutely mean that. It would take about two hundred grand a year, and we can do everything we want to do to the fullest potential. And that's, that's not my salary that I'm asking for. That's to fund everything. We need about two hundred grand a year to do it exactly you know, to the absolute fullest potential. A staff, unbelievable technology, a couple of vehicles. Yes, it's about 200 grand per year to make it reach its maximum potential. So if you're sitting on a pot of money and you want to underwrite it, absolutely let me know and I'll make everything available for free. Until that day, this is how we fund it. And so what I'm going to do, I'm working with a bunch of great people. It's not just me. I talk about that I'm the lead singer of the band, so to speak, but the guys behind me and gals that help me, men and women that help me out, uh, we're going to do some amazing things, and we've done some amazing things. So what we're going to do is bring back the concept of a mobile version of our content. We're not going to redo an app. That's too expensive, too much headache, too much to keep up with. So we're going to develop a web app accessible through Patreon and your membership there. It's going to be $5 per month, and you can cancel it any time. You can do a dollar and then upgrade to $5. You get put into a, uh, your, your email address, gets put into our database, and you will log in just like we have here. Sorry. Uh, we'll set up on this, this new web app that we're working on. You have a little login area, and you can log in, and you will then have access to all the cameras and all this stuff, but in a format that will work on your iPhone, your Android, your iPad, your tablet, your computer, your, you know, Windows, your Linux. You know, it's, uh, we're going to use something called Bootstrap, uh, my programmer, Jason. We're working on it because we're in a position to do so now, thanks to your support. Those of you that have done this through Patreon, now I can afford to make some things happen. 
and I don't have to spend a tremendous amount of money doing it because people are very reasonable, they're willing to help out, and we're going to move forward with that. So by August 1st, if not sooner, we will have a new interface where it'll basically replace the Hurricane Impact app. You will have to join through Patreon at the $5 level, and it's $5 a month, and you know what? Before you gripe about it, if it's not worth investing in, okay, I understand that. No hard feelings. Some people cannot afford that. But the way I look at it, we all used to go to the movies. Well, most of us. We all buy fast food. We purchase things, in-app purchases, games, whatever. We value certain things. I like to go see IMAX movies. They're very expensive compared to renting something for $4 on Amazon Prime or just enjoying my Netflix membership. That's something that I choose to do. And we try to make as much as we can available to everybody at no cost, but in order to fund the future, this is how we do it. And I stand by the fact that we are doing stuff that is innovative and absolutely revolutionary. We've been doing that for 15 years with the live video and even longer with the HurricaneTrack.com technology that began in 1999. And basically you become an investor. You're not buying a product from me like I'm selling you a candy bar and you eat it and that's the end of it or a hamburger or whatever. You know what I'm saying? We are working together on this. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to continue to grow uh, the crowdfunding, but with that investment fund, and funds plural, we're going to continue to grow what we're able to do for you in return. So we're working on a new enhanced hurricane tracking map online that's going to be uh, really nice. You're going to like that. We're uh, going to continue to expand the live cameras, the access to the GoPro cameras. All of that is wrapped into this Patreon crowdfunding support mechanism that we have to in turn better support the greater good and provide you with content and information. And at the end of the day, you become more aware, more educated, and you have access to something that no Nobody, nobody else in the world is doing this, period. There are other people that do storm chasing. There's other people putting some cameras out there. I get that. And you have some great networks, the Weather Channel, CNN, say what you want about television and media. They still do a great job covering the weather, especially the Weather Channel. But this, what we're doing online, and it's been this way for 15 years, is unlike anything else that's available anywhere period and I stand by that and those of you that have been a part of it you know so let me hear from you if you've been a part of it retweet this when I sorry I bumped the mic uh, share this video let people know yeah I'm a part of this whether you're a dollar patron or some of our $100 patrons and even higher than that some people get involved with even more money and they're able to actively participate as an active investor. We've had several people do that over the years. Anyhow, that's what we're doing. That's where we're heading. And it is crowdfunded. Power in numbers. Strength in numbers. It's amazing what we're able to do when we pool our resources. Not just the money. I'm trying to get rid of me so I can say goodbye. Not just the money, but the power of our intellect put together to make some great things happen. That's where we're going. That's how we got here. I look forward to it. I'm extremely excited about the future, and I invite you to become a part of it. So stay tuned for that. Um, the new version of what we had with the app, ready by August 1st, as a web app. I'll talk all about it once it's available. I'll demo it for you. I'll show you how it works. It's going to be exciting. All right? All right. Enjoy the quiet while it lasts. You know the hurricane season is going to be busy. Do what you can now to prepare even if it means just thinking about it. Because if you do it now, it'll help you in the future. I promise. As always, thank you for tuning in. I am Mark Sutteth, HurricaneTrack.com. We'll talk again tomorrow.